How should we pay for the enormous damage wrought by this pandemic? It's rather simple. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to help navigate this turbulent world. The coronavirus catastrophe is a once in a century pandemic, and therefore it is fitting that its costs be financed with 100 year treasury bonds with, say, a 2% coupon. We borrowed immense sums of money to finance World War II, and we must do the same for the COVID 19 disaster. The money mobilized by these bonds would boost the economy by both soundly paying for the damage wrought by COVID-19 and by providing resources for needed infrastructure projects and repairs. The appetite for such securities in the current environment would be huge, drawing massive amounts of money both here at home and from around the world. Insurers, pension funds and others with long-term liabilities would be especially keen for super safe bonds with a real yield. So would foreign institutions, including central banks, as well as individual investors. We would lock in a rate that is ultra low by historic standards. When interest rates go up, as they someday will, we won't have to worry about refinancing this debt and having to pay higher rates to do it. We thereby will save immense sums of money in future budgets. Future Treasury chiefs will be grateful for the existence of these Trump era bonds. As for the here and now, we could raise literally trillions of dollars to help pay for the relief packages and for infrastructure and other recovery projects. Other countries may howl that we're sucking capital away from them, but they haven't created an environment that is welcoming to that money, as the administration did before the COVID-19 crisis, and would do so again if the elections are successful. Those resources shouldn't remain idle, and putting them to work here would create a new prosperity that would benefit them too. These bonds would help quell inflation fears, which were reflected in the higher price of gold. By mobilizing existing capital, especially from overseas, we need not fear the Federal Reserve printing too much money, especially if we specify that the Fed cannot buy these securities for the next year or so. Other countries have successfully floated 100-year bonds in recent years, including Austria, Ireland, Belgium, and yes, Mexico. If they can do it, we could do as well. We could call these new treasury securities the new boom bonds or some other fitting name. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. And I look forward to being with you soon again. Mm -hmm.